Welcome back. You know that diabetes is so impacted by nutrition, one of the most important things that we can do and as far as management. And we have a team here that's going to tell us about some of the newer ways that we may be looking at nutrition in diabetes treatment. We're talking with Roberto Malta from the University of Pittsburgh, Goshen Chen from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, and Meg Moretta from USC. Welcome, guys. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the research that you all have been working on. So we, we specify on diet intervention and how it affects type 2 diabetes. In my group, we actually look into the repercussions in the liver and how it affects hyperglycemia control in preclinical models and then in the clinic. And so you have to take what you guys learn and research and, and bring it to people. Yes, we come to these meetings and we learn what's going on and then we transfer it to, what's, what, to our patients. So what I do is I work specifically with each person individually and I meet them where they are. Um, and then we start making changes and it's, it's, we're moving towards personalized nutrition. So it's not a cookie cutter. It's not like, here's a diet sheet. It's not like that anymore. We're really trying to personalize it and bring in different, um, their favorite foods and their cultures and mixing it in and then learning how to modify it. So they just have better outcomes. Because as we were talking about earlier, there is no magic diet. No, no, and that's the, the hardest thing to get across from people because they're, they're, they are looking for that magic bullet. Um, and it's, it's not like that. And everybody's very different. I mean, now that we have CGM sensors, we're really seeing how food impacts their blood sugars. Can you tell me more about the ADA's Diabetes Food Hub? They have a great food hub um, that you are able to access. And, you know, I share that with all my patients. There's recipes and there's tips. So it's a really great resource for people. Now, you mentioned CGMs being a, an important tool. Tell us how that's really helping. I think it helps because it allows patients the education they need on their control. And I think part of the efforts from the ADA is also being shown in the Food Hub, all of these different mechanisms that the, the patients can actually um, get resources to do. And part of it is the research that we're doing translates into what patients actually get out of the educational aspect of the ADA, the software that we're using, programs that we're using, and then making sure that patients get the education that they need to get better outcomes. Yeah. They can also learn from their own uh, observation. You know, what are the food good for them? Uh, what are food that going to uh, hurt their health? Mm -hmm. So we are still in the process to understand mm -hmm. the whole thing. And everybody is different from the genetic setting and the culture of their food, what they like to eat, and the way they cook their food. Mm -hmm. All this contributes to the final outcome in, in, in terms of diabetes is it blood glucose. And so again, as we stressed, it's such an individual thing for each person. You guys were talking about you know, some metabolism studies here, uh, particular vitamins and nutrients. It gets down to real minutia, right? It, it really does. I mean, um, it, nutrition really is at the cellular level. So I mean, what they're doing is really like important work. Um, and again, then that helps us translate it to people um, with that and, and learn, have, having our patients learn how to balance their meals and because it, sometimes it doesn't come naturally to people. So any new things that you are going to be looking into that you want to share? I think the overall aspect is um, we're looking into wide studies about genomics and mm -hmm. I think that anticipates um, where our efforts have to be guided. I think those studies mm -hmm. that yes. take big populations, big data, and incorporates all of these knowledge from preclinical settings, helps elaborate into new um, individual and personalized medicine. That's what we're trying to approach. And I think some of these studies are being done here at the ADA, and many of the people that are sharing the research and everything makes an impact on how the bench side is actually um, affecting bedside as well. Yes. So what can you say for patients that just may be struggling today? What, what, what's the number one thing you want to tell them? I usually have them pick one thing to work on because then it's not so overwhelming. And then they also will, once they start working on that one thing, they'll, they get a win. Like they see like, oh, I can do this. And so one thing can transfer to two things, can transfer to three things. So, it, you know, they keep working on this and it's, it's, it's those little wins that really make a difference with people.
um, seeing their blood sugar better or they're able to move better or they're able to sleep better. So those are all, all everybody's different. So we work on different things with each person. They should trust science. Mm -hmm. They should believe professionals mm -hmm. and the, trying to learn for themselves. That's another thing because you just cannot lessen and trying to say, some, oh, that one works for somebody else, must work for me. Yeah. Maybe not. You really have to listen to your registered RDs, our doctors, and uh, trust them and uh, trust the science. Yeah. And I think that's a great way to leave off. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us today. We're going to have much more for you coming up through the day on ADA TV. Mm -hmm.